Today, we've got Orson Lord back on the Story Copywriter podcast. So long-time listeners might remember that Orson is a videographer, runs a business called Mediable, where he turns strangers into customers using video. So I'd like to refer, you know, if you haven't listened to our previous conversations with Orson, go back and listen to episodes 24 and 39, where we talk about storytelling in video. Uh, since we last spoke, AI and chat GPT and so on has really broken onto the scene. Uh, Orson is quite active on LinkedIn and there's been posting some interesting things he's been doing. So I thought, well, let's get Orson back on because the landscape has clearly changed, the storytelling landscape. And, you know, for, for just purely for my own purposes, I, I am trying to figure out how to use this, how to use this optimally. So, so Orson, welcome back. And I'm, I'm looking forward to delving into this. Thank you very much, Rob. Look, it's got to be a really exciting talk. And I know just looking at the general landscape, I've seen with copywriters and creative people in general, people seem to get split in one of two camps. They're either going, this is the best thing ever, or this is the worst thing ever. And if you think this is the worst thing ever, I'm going to make you really angry today. <laughs> so I'm going to be talking about like straight up. Uh, I think the best way I can even explain how much I love this is that there was a, um, I got a little story of when I first started using AI, and this is probably about, oh, would have been at the very beginning of this year. We're talking early January and I'm, driving home on a Friday at 2 p.m. going, what the just happened? I've been using AI for two weeks and then something clicked. And all of a sudden, I usually go home at 7 or 8 p.m. Anyone that knows me, I'm always in the office till well into the night. It's 9 p.m. right now. I still feel like it's the middle of the day. And I'm going home at 2 p.m. And I'm just like, what just happened? I've got all this time. Everything's done. And then I went and had a weekend and enjoyed time with my family and friends. And I was like, wow, this is the best. Amazing. That's, I mean, that's, that's a great game. I mean, I'm, I'm somewhere in between of like, I haven't run onto the bandwagon, but I can definitely see that this is a game changer. This is going to significantly change the landscape. Um, so I, I think I'm somewhere in between what I think it's broadly a positive thing. I think my experience with it so far is that the written, the written output tends to be a bit shaky, but I think people are often asking it to do too much. And if you just write it to ask you a story, you just write a story in <laughs> horrible cliches. Mm. Um, but I think it's a great research tool. And I think the, the writing aspect is going to get better as well. Absolutely. I th look, I think you can both ask it a lot and a little, and it's how you go about doing it. So I, I really like to treat AI like it's the, the smartest free intern you'll ever get. It's going to put together everything really quickly. It's going to, like, you can ask it to take 10 pages of research. Actually, not really. There's a limit. So you can take about two pages of research of condensed information and go, can you organize this in the most engaging way possible, like a story? It'll do it instantly. Um, and, it, and it'll do it instantly. It'll add its own knowledge. But what it lacks is that AI never has really worked in the real world. So it lacks wisdom on whether this is the right choice. It'll give you a lot of the good options, but it won't, you won't know if it's the right choice unless you're the expert. This this is something I've been tr trying to figure out because obviously I I spend a lot of time interviewing people to explore their story, and then I'll kind of get all of the threads that we talked about, and then I'll go through it and and mm. just ask which ones cause the storytelling bell to ring in my head, which ones kind of make me feel something, and obviously AI can't feel anything, so I still feel like <laughs> you have to do that. But I'm like, well, mm. could, could it assist? Could it like shave some some time off? And I think it probably I think it. Perhaps good. Hundred percent. I think um yeah, there's a few stories we could actually talk about in this regard. So there's, you know, what it's good at, what it's not good at, but also how can it shave time off? And I'll give a really good one. And this isn't as story as some of the more story stuff you've done, but nevertheless, I do create YouTube videos for a few clients of mine, and these are quite often for businesses boring educational pieces. They can be quite boring if we're not careful. We really got to make sure we add something. And there was one um, in, a, in Australia and all around the world right now, interest rates are rising. And by the way, I have no idea about interest rates. AI really helped me out here in this story. <laughs> but um, what was interesting is that they gave me two pages. I got my client to give me two pages on why interest rates are rising and what people can do about it. And it was a slog to read through. And immediately I threw this into AI and I went, can you turn this into a story and just pasted all the information below? And it went, 
Sure thing. So Jack and Jill wanted to buy a house and the well, unfortunately the big bad RBA, the Royal Bank of Australia, came in and increased interest rates, which lowered their borrowing capacity, meaning they could no longer buy the castle they originally wanted. It was actually like a fable story. Mm. <laughs> but the structure was there. There was a good person. You could the replace those guy. elements. You could replace Jack and Jill with a real person, basically. Yeah, exactly. And what I did in this case, and this is where AI, here's one of their really good strengths, is it's really good at rearranging things and it's really good at changing the style. If you ever ask AI to turn a poem into a rap or um, anything into a song of some style, it does it really quickly. And it can also do that with the style of content. So with that story, I then asked, well, could you turn this into a professional presentation and immediately got rid of the story and the castle and it became this professional business presentation, which was actually a perfect script for YouTube. It got us to about 80% there in two hours when beforehand it took us four weeks to get there because it was back and forth, back and forth so many times. So um, the time-saving aspects and just getting us to the the draft before fine cut was incredible. Yeah. I think I think taking the structure, I think, is really powerful. Hmm. And um, just working with something that isn't blank, mm -hmm. I think is quite compelling. That's, I think, the biggest one. I think arranging information and ideas, like, you know, when we write a story, a lot of techniques involve just putting up a bunch of sticky notes or bullet points on these are things I could talk about in my story, but then going, where do they go in the story? What, do I start here? Do I start there? When it, it's a, That's the art of storytelling is that pacing, right? And AI is really good at making you feel something because it's, as far as that system goes, it's been rewarded in learning how to write things in a way that make us feel something. That's the only way this AI has been programmed. So it's not going to get some things right, but it can get you pretty, it can get you 80% pretty quickly. Mm. Mm. Going on from that, I've kind of been hinting a lot at, you know, what it's good at, what it's not good at. And I do have a story, which is something I witnessed on YouTube, which really explains where AI is good. And this is going to help people like copywriters understand how AI is going to help them excel in the workforce, which is, so there's this, channel on YouTube and there are these four chefs and they want to simulate a situation where they got AI to write a recipe based on the leftovers in the fridge. It's a bit of a game. They're going to, they're going to have the chefs versus the AI and see who could make the better leftover dish. Uh, and so what ended up happening is they drew these ingredients from the hat and they, I, I'm sure they rigged the game because I could not think of a worse combination. They got crab meat, blue cheese, sesame seed and digestive biscuits which is a sweet biscuit for those that don't understand a sweet crumbly biscuit yep. now this is not a good combination right you can, i don't know if you can think of anything you can cook with them but ai and its miraculous intelligence of knowing everything in the world went great blue cheese and crab meat go together and make a savory crab and cheese dip cheese and digestive biscuits make a cheesecake so we're going to make a savory cheesecake a crab and cheesecake with sesame seeds toasted on top and so basically put, they cooked this dish and they didn't vomit, but it was very gaggable as far as it went. And <laughs> the chefs went, we could not have thought of a better combination for this dish, except for should we have cooked it at all? <laughs> and that should was the line that's put it all me. in the bin. Yes, yeah. exactly. But that's, mm. that's where you as a copywriting expert, me as a videographer, marketing person, and these chefs who have wisdom, they've had knowledge, know that you should not do this. But the AI isn't going to take that into consideration because it's never tasted anything. It's no, just and you're just always... asking it to do, to do something computational without any value judgments assigned to the things that are yeah. in the ingredients list. But it will, it will give you really good suggestions. It'll go, these are the best options we have right now, but you as an expert have to say whether you should do it. Mm. So that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And that's the best way I know how to explain right now how AI lacks wisdom. Yeah, and this, this this is quite interesting to me. So obviously my my background, not just in copywriting, is also in Google Ads and AI and automation has been coming into Google Ads for a long time. You know, we've kind of switched from manual bidding to automatic bidding where Google kind of, and all, all the ad networks do this. They, you know, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, they, they adjust the, the bids uh, in, in each ad auction in real time based on more data than you have access to. And mm. my, my, my stance is that these platforms are going to be better at setting the right bid than you are because it's a computational mm -hmm. problem. So anything computational, ultimately, the system should be doing at some points. And yes, you might have to put some 
checks and balances on it and not give it unlimited reign to do that in the beginning. Yep. Um, because, you know, that's leaving the, the fox to guard the hen house in many respects. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, it's, it's a computational problem. So you know, Google, et cetera, is mm -hmm. going to be better at doing that than me. So yeah. I, I'm kind of like, well, if you apply that to copywriting, there's some, which parts of it are computational and which parts require judgment and wisdom and introspection mm -hmm. and and dialogue. Well, obviously, the, 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 the dialogue that I have with the clients who, pull their story out in the first place mm -hmm. you know, could they do that by just talking into chat gpt this is a, this is an interesting one concept right here and you're onto something that's pretty much on like the edge of where ai is right now which is can an ai like handle themselves and do what you do with it so could they instead of hiring rob the copywriter could they go to ai and go write me some copy maybe mm. maybe look i uh, it's and without going situation by situation it's hard to tell I mean, on the on the interview that I do with clients, like there is a, it's not formulaic, but there is a pattern mm -hmm. to the questions that I will ask. Yeah, I think really the what... judgment, the judgment is in knowing when to kind of push the conversation on and when to ask the client to slow down, stop, describe something in more detail. Because it's often the most important stories are the ones they throw out and they try to skip over. Yeah, I don't know that an AI would know how to recognize that. No, that, that, that's where the wisdom comes in here. Mm. So, um, and it's not even, the AI may know to do that, but you've got to ask it to do that, to do that. If you just mm. say, make the best story out of these points, it's not going to go, hang on, do you have something we can talk about here so we can add a, a bigger pain point to make this more enticing? It's not going to do that. It's just going to be, it's, it's your yes man uh, intern. All the knowledge in the world, mm. just going to say yes and do what you ask. It's not going to have that wisdom to push things further where it's not obvious. In a, in a previous role, I um, was very overstretched in a kind of head of marketing role. And my director of book me decided to hire me a VA. She's like, right, Rob's overstretched. We're going to hire Rob a VA. This is going to solve all, all of our problems. The <laughs> VA was based in, I don't know, I can't remember, like the Philippines or somewhere. And, and she, she would log on in the morning and say, great, what do you want me to do today? And I'd be like, <laughs> like I, I am an expert journalist. Like, this is going to take a bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um, and it, it just it just fell through because it, it's like I would have spent more time trying to explain yeah. what to do and perhaps in the long term maybe we, perhaps we could have done that but it was going to take so much time to get there yeah I, so this is a, a really good point I make and this is going to with, I've helped a few businesses build um, AI into their systems um, and I've even partnered with a guy and we've developed a course on putting AI into systems and when you're getting your your free intern who works at the speed of a calculator, which is ChatGPT, you have to give it standard operations and procedures to make it be a productive tool to use. If you just go in there and try using it willy wally here, there, you'll, you'll save a minute or two, but you're not really going to make these massive impacts that you're going to hear all these people talking about. I, what I spend and we, me and my uh, mate do, we spend a few times doing is we'll actually develop these pretty extensive prompts, which is what you give an AI, you go, you give it a bunch of text and it turns that text into more text. We really develop and fine tune those prompts. And this is going to go into that. One of those things you're saying, can AI replace an expert? One of the best prompts I received from someone else was a person who's, he's pretty much an expert in writing case studies for creative professionals. This is what he does. And he gave me this, he gave me three prompts to put into chat GPT one at a time. And it basically made ChatGPT act like him. It said, you're now going to act as a creative copywriter for Media Ball, a video production agency. And it gave a bit more text and said, I want you to ask me each of these questions one at a time. And it just listed the 10 questions. You put this prompt in and boom, question one came up. You answered it. Boom. Question two came up. You answered it. Did that all the way down to 10. It said, are you ready for me to write? Yes. It took the answer from those 10 questions and turned that into a story structure, or it actually just turned into a very big information dump. The second prompt turned it into a more compelling story where it made the client the hero, and Mediable came in as the, uh, you know, your Yoda video agency, the one that gave all the advice and the wisdom to help this company. And then I was followed by a whole bunch of suggestions like, hey, can you give me advice on what images I should get for this case study? And it did all this really well, and it felt like I was working with an expert consultant mm. right there and then he was able to turn ai into him which was a very mm. interesting concept 
And I think the benefit of AI, so something I'm quite good at is reviewing, taking on a lot of information, holding that in a single place in my head and figuring out like where are all the patterns, how do different things relate to each other. But mm -hmm. the AI can hold infinite, infinite information in way sort more of, sources. In, well, perhaps it's, infinite, I, I... perhaps infinite's <laughs> a bit strong, but compared to my head, it's relatively mm. large. Mm. Yeah, that, um, that is actually a big threat for you, I'll be honest. I think, and like, because that's, that's a skill set that AI is really good at. I don't know if it's going to take over or not. It's early days. The It always comes back to that wisdom, though. Should you do something? People who get paid to tell people whether they should or should not do something seems to be quite safe. Right now, at least, you know, AI, who knows where it's going to go. It could That's hit general intelligence. That's all I want to do. I, I just want to speak to people and tell, <laughs> and tell them, should they, should they or not do something? Like, that's fine. I can... And that's what you should do, Rob. Like, that's 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 what I want to get to as well. Because, okay, this is the thing. You know, you know me. I'm not wedded to really writing the words. I'm not wedded to <laughs> planning the stories. Like, if AI is yes. better at, at me than that, then that's fine. Great. And this, and this is where I think a lot of artists versus designers get hung up, which is artists, they always think about, I'm... They're enamored with doing the work, the inputs. Designers are just caring about the final result, which is the, you know, the final piece of content. And that's the output, right? Mm. So people, and this is where I think you'll notice this in the art community. So especially like in the Hollywood realm. So in the video editing world, there is commercial video editors. And then there's, you know, your movie video editors. And the second you draw that line, you'll see immediately how much the Hollywood video editors hate AI. Like just mm -hmm. as a culture, think it's the worst thing ever versus the designers. We're just like, woo, more money for us because I do mm -hmm. less work, get more done. They're going to pay me more. And that's always <laughs> been the tendency is that when, when technology comes in to make something more productive, yes, the service becomes cheaper, but the person providing it always ends up making more. And as far mm -hmm. as these creative worlds go, I feel like we deserve a bit more money. And mm -hmm. so this is where AI is coming in is that they can eliminate the amount of time it takes to do inputs. So no longer do we need to spend hours upon hours editing a video. We still got to edit them, but that's coming soon. Um, mm. Or writing or putting the structure together or collecting information and, and organizing it in the correct order for a story. Instantly, we just copy, paste, hit enter, good to go. And that frees up us to give more time to either doing multiple iterations on a story and going, yep, this is the right one. I have the wisdom to know that this iteration is going to give you the best results. It just shifts your focus to what really is higher value, more, more mm. important things. And I think if you can do that, then surely that's a great outcome. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I think that's where, if you can focus on that, how you can get it to save your time in doing the work and just spend more time customer service, working with the clients, consulting them. Yeah, you, you, you will be much better off. So how are you using this in regards to video is there any, obviously there's this, you know, there's the input of gathering someone's story and planning a mm -hmm. story and you know, we've kind of touched on that. And then there's, yeah. there's also the output as well. And I wondered at what points you were applying this the most. Um, so where I'm applying this the most, it's, it's definitely mostly all in the drafting phase, but drafting is definitely where like 80% of my work's been in the video world, especially in terms of planning, gathering ideas. It's always been in that world. And so I, I can usually come up with a good title for a YouTube video. I'll spend half as much time coming up with a half decent title and just going into AI and going, can you give me 10 suggestions? And mm. immediately he's like, da, 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 three, four or five are good. And I'll just test them on YouTube and figure out which one's the best. It's like that. Um, I'm pretty sure we talked about this last time where people think it's about the video and it's not. It's about it's about the planning and the getting mm. in, getting everything in line before you're actually ready to go in the first place. That's it. Um, that's it, Rob. I might actually even, I, I don't think we've ever shared images on, on a podcast before, but I'll even just describe it out for the listeners here. So I don't know if you can recognize who that is. I want to actually play a game. Let's see if you recognize him. Um, I do not. Although my no. wife complains, I literally don't know anyone or anything. Anyone. And she thinks, I, <laughs> she basically thinks I've never watched any movies ever. So fair enough. I don't know if you know <laughs> Alex Hormozzi on YouTube. No. So he's blown up quite big at the moment. Um, Alex Homozi is this big buff guy. He's this entrepreneur who, and he, his kind of personal brand is he's this big muscly guy and he's a mid, he's a low 30, I think he's like 33 and he's a billionaire. So quite impressive background, but he's not a, a technical nerd kind of guy. So, but his videos are quite prolific. So I wanted to make a video called how to edit like Alex Homozi. 
And I thought, no one's ever seen Alex typing at a computer like this. So I've got big buff Alex typing over a computer, and the title of this video is going to be Edit Like Alex Hormozzi. And it's an actual, looks like an actual photo of him. So I don't know how realistic that looks to you. It's, it's, yeah, there's little it's flaws here and there. It's possible. Yeah. It catches your eye quickly. Yep. Yep. So, I think it, I think it's his eyes looking at you that, that catch my attention. But... I did brighten them up. <laughs> mm. So, um, look, that that's just a quick little output I've done today. And that's just a new thing because you could never have created that before to try and Photoshop Alex typing over a computer. He, there's no photo of him that's close to that pose. So it was just nice to be able to find this instantly. Mm. It was an instant. It took me about an hour to create this, but... Well, I, I would have glanced at that and, like, it wouldn't have stood out to me as not being an actual image. Mm. But I yeah. perhaps believe everything at face value that I see. And, <laughs> um, but, you know. No, um, I'll give... So this is an interesting thing about quality, and this comes up with AI. So... It wasn't too long ago, AI was struggling to draw something very specific, which was fingers. Um, I don't know if you've heard about that, but one of the quickest ways to tell if a picture was AI was count the fingers on someone's hand. There was always four right. or six, but never five. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing, because I'd always... One of the things I do as an output is actually when I'm coming up with thumbnails for a client, like we're saying, you know, to be successful on YouTube, focus on the title and thumbnail first, not the actual video. One of the things we'll do is I'll go through multiple iterations of just coming up with thumbnail ideas using that um, same image generator app. It's really interesting because I'd always send these to the clients and they go, oh, these are great. Why don't we just use this thumbnail right here? This is, this is perfect. Go, oh, the guy's got seven fingers. <laughs> no, one's, no one sees it. No one sees it. Yeah, no one sees <laughs> and then it. they go, oh, how does no one see that? That's horrible. Like you didn't see it. So it's funny how we, it's, AI will make you feel things and it, you don't actually see it until someone points it out. And then you can't um, unsee it. Then, then, then you can't unsee it, right? So, mm. um, but literally three months ago, they came out, or two months ago, they came out with Mid Journey version five, and it, most of the time you get five fingers now. So that's not a problem. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some remote parts of the UK where you know perhaps that's perhaps that's a good representation of the people. But <laughs> burn. <laughs> yeah. um, going back to your original question. Um, what are the other outputs where it's really helping? So another one I'll actually say is this podcast here. If you're listening, this podcast will have been 90% edited using AI. So there's, it's honestly, it's actually not even AI. It's a bit of an insult to call it AI, but there's a new program out that literally just cuts to whoever's speaking. And so it's done with an automated program. So that's another output yeah. right there. I mean, before this, before this call, uh, yeah, awesome. was like, don't we? Don't, don't worry about the editing. I've got it covered. I've got an AI tool. I was like, you know what? That's fine. I'm also not wedded to doing the editing. <laughs> Especially for a podcast. And for here's a podcast. The, like another good thing to point out here is with these automatic tools, they can always get a 90% accuracy, but you do need that wisdom to check if it's good. There are things where it just doesn't matter if it's good. And one of them I think is even podcast editing. It's mm. the it's as long as we're cutting to the right person and we're cutting to an appropriate reaction here or there. It's more about what we're talking and saying to each other than about this guy doing some cool transition effects or glitches or adding music cues and sound effects. None of that matters. It's mm. just it's more about it's what we it's say. It's having so, the content, the content, right, yeah, first and foremost. Yeah. So editing on podcasts is just a barrier to entry. So mm. this is jumping ahead to the. For anyone listening to this, it might be jumping ahead, but can can the editing kind of identify segments that we could create snippets of conversation, like shorter videos? Or... So I've, because I've that would be seen a that. Save. No, uh, that would be an amazing time save if it could cut shorts, but they can't do that. There are many, pro you know, companies have been advertising this for three months and it's the biggest thing. Like they say, hey, we'll give you 80 shorts out of your podcast in minutes. And then literally they've got mm. a program and it must have a random number generator where it starts and stops and it just... And it's the worst thing you'd ever see. Um, there aren't programs that do that. The best thing you can do is still hire someone, hire an editor. Yeah. Um, here's a little life hack you got. I know if you've got to hire another VA anytime, Rob. Um, if you ever got to edit a video and you want to get the VA to do it, just record yourself editing a video and then narrate why you're making these cuts. Then and get then, the yeah, get, that, copy it. Get, then get them to cut that tutorial down and then that's a training video. And now they've learned yeah. it. Yeah, I think mm. that's interesting because like, I feel like having a podcast is like having this lemon that you can then squeeze to get other mm. stuff out of it, but you've got to squeeze it. 
Like you can't just have the lemon. <laughs> it's like, yes, you can get the transcripts. Yes, you can do interesting things with the transcripts. You can you can convert it into blog posts. You can convert it mm. into book chapters. You can convert it into, into video, YouTube, YouTube yep. shorts. But it's quite a lot of work. Um, yeah. But it's it's definitely like an area of development that I, I can see. I think so. I think it's one of the most underutilized things. I think if you look at the discoverability of podcasts, one of the biggest ways to grow them is to create short content from it because that short content's quite discoverable. Podcasts aren't. So it's a great way to bring people into it. Yeah, um, right. Anyway, I don't know if we're dig going too far off topic or if this is where you want to go. No, no, perfect. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. perfect. Cool. So you can do things with AI to help make it better. So one of the things I would even suggest, so right now there is a limitation with AI. It can only take so many words in at a time. It, right now it's roughly about 4,000 words. And you watch when we want to bring that down to 2,000 so you can have follow-up conversations. And podcasts go well over that right This now. is something I've run into, yeah. What I want to do is mm -hmm. feed feed the transcript into AI and say, right, yeah. <laughs> you, de you deal with it, and it, it just can't. Yeah, yeah, jam this in. Like, it remembers everything <laughs> everywhere all at once, yeah. except what's being talked about right now, exactly yeah. like a VA, like exactly like an intern. Mm. <laughs> um, but, no, it's a joke. The, the So that's the biggest issue. But there are tools out there right now. There's a Merlin plugin, which works really well. Anytime, there's, it, you can, it can summarize any YouTube video, and it's worked on any length. So that's been cool. Mm. I'd love to, but Merlin's just an AI. It's just actually an interface that's in, using chat gpt underneath it's chat gpt with a new paint over the top and they've added a few little prompts in there to make it work somehow so mm. i'd be curious to see how it's able to summarize hour-long videos and it gives you 10 12 14 bullet points really well so maybe that might be an investigation for us to do together rob and we could do that for other people but yeah um what you could do with that is if you could get it to summarize hey what are the best key takeaways you could then you know command f find those points in the podcast and then cut them out that would yeah. totally you could you definitely use it as a way to search you could even be specific and go can you give me the best takeaways for an aspiring copywriter who wants to make a quick buck now they'll go oh yeah mm. these are the points where we talked about that and it would find them that that, that would be an immediate efficiency gain for for me mm -hmm. in the podcast actually yeah, absolutely. And But the main thing is there, you know, you hear me talking, right? I didn't say to the AI, hey, find me the best snippetable contents. I went, find me for these people. It's, it's knowing- it was, more, it was a more specific request, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So there is, um even going into here, this might be something for people who are curious about AI. you got to get really good at writing prompts and being specific. And anyone who's had an assist or had an employee under them will know how this works. You, mm -hmm. The more specific you can be with people, the more you can get done efficiently. Like if you want to get someone to buy a pen, don't go, hey, go buy me a pen. Go, hey, here's the budget. Here's the color. Here's my preferred brands or types. Otherwise, you're going to get like a Mickey Mouse biro or something. Like. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you need a good pen to sign for contract and they go and give you those big bull points. And next thing you know, the, the yeah. documents don't hold up in court because they faded. It's not quite the big deal pen, is it? It's, no, it's, it's not. It's, the big it's deal not something pen. you'd sign a peace treaty with. <laughs> yes, that's, that you're on the. That's exactly it. So when you're creating these prompts, you don't. And this is where everyone starts. They throw in a really simple prompt. They go, "Oh, that's kind of cool," but I don't see how that's going to work. And then they, they go away. Going back to that example I had, where an expert wrote a prompt where it set the frame up for how an AI was to think, followed by the questions, followed by the way it processed that information. It was able to get really close to how this expert actually thought and processed and did his job. So. Mm. which is kind of scary when people hear that because it means you could just give someone a prompt and then they can run off and, you know, get the job done without you. Mm. But that's that's kind of where it goes where you need to go with AI. And there are a lot of things you can do. One of the f first things I always recommend is people learn about expert personas and follow-up prompts. I don't know if you've heard about them. No, no, no. Could you elaborate? Sure thing. So there's a multiple ways you can do it, but you can quite quickly get AI to be a lot better by getting it, giving it an expert persona. So an expert persona could be anything from, hey, I want you to become an expert copywriter for a website and help me do this. It, it immediately will start changing the way. It'll always start with, all right, I'm now an expert copywriter, but it immediately gets into the groove really quickly. Mm -hmm. So doing that, an interesting one I did recently was, uh, it's, I, I mean, like to say, like, do not- You could ask it to be a CEO or you could ask it to be an FD or- Yeah. 
I got I got it to pretend to be a customer. Hey, I want you to be a potential customer for Media Ball. I want to pre and I actually went and role played sales calls with it because I don't get to do sales calls often. I'm a high ticket seller, so mm -hmm. I was able to set the contacts like here. Here's how I sell. Here's the problems I solve. I want you to be a customer looking for this. I want you to be the customer. And once you finish talking like customer, I will respond as the seller. And then bump, bump, bump. And it was great. It got me to really kind of just play with different situations. It's only 10, 20% of actually talking to a customer, but it was a great start to have. It was a good sourcing um, point, yeah. Yeah. And another one I had, and this is something I'm going to be very careful about saying this. Like, so just full disclaimer at the beginning, don't use AI as legal advice. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. if you've got a no worries contract. So, I mean, like, if you do not care if everything falls through, you get sued, it can be used quite well. One of the things I did when I was creating this course on how to use AI with this AI expert, we got AI to act as a legal consultant and, and we got it to help suggest anything we're missing. And it was great. Right. It went, oh, we never thought about time frame. So, you know, what happens if someone doesn't deliver on time? What are the repercussions? Can someone back out? What's happening here? Um, and again, we trusted each other enough to know that we weren't going to screw each other over, but we wanted to go that extra mile to help each other out. And we were able sure. to use AI as this expert consultant. And instead of paying $500 for a lawyer to talk with us for a couple of hours, got it for free instantly. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's expert personas. Then there's also follow-up prompts. So a lot of people, they'll write a prompt and then that's it. Follow-up prompts are just ways of being able to translate information. So chat GPT was the first one to do this, but where you could talk to it, it would talk back. And then when you give it or gave it a response, it would actually refer back to everything that was said above. And that's a big game changer because everything I've talked about before, I've always talked about how the case study expert, how he used the follow-up prompts to go from information to story to visual recommendations. It was a, those follow-up prompts were key to getting, giving a full service. So if you're going to get into AI, these are the first two places I would look at playing with. Yeah, that's great. Mm. Is there anything else you're curious about? Um, could you give could you give an example of a follow up prompt, um, mm -hmm. perhaps within the context of you asking AI to mimic a customer um, interaction, like you said with with the sales process that you that you were describing? Sure thing. Do you mind if we put this on pause for two minutes and I'll load it up? Yeah, yeah, sure. You know what, Rob? So I can't find it, but I'll give you a just as good one. So I'm going to, I'll give a visual demonstration of how we can use AI to create prompts to talk to AI. So we're going to use AI to help us work with AI. Sound a bit meta? Perfect. Yep. Does that make sense or is it confusing? Either nope. way, I'll explain it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is ChatGPT. This is the only AI that everyone's going nuts about at the moment. Everything else is kind of here, here nor there. Bard's kind of catching up at the moment. But if you're talking about like words AI, it's just ChatGPT at the moment. If you want to talk about images, we'd be talking about Midjourney, but here we are in ChatGPT. So Rob, this is, when I'm creating prompts, this is one of the prompts I'll start with. I just, just copied and pasted this in and I will read this out to you. It's a bit of a mouthful. So here we go. So this is the prompt I'm sending to ChatGPT. One, I want you to become my prompt creator. Your goal is to help me craft the best possible prompt for my needs. The prompt will be used by you, ChatGPT. You will follow the following process. Two, your first response will be to ask me what the prompt should be about. I will provide my answer, but we will need to improve it through continual iterations by going through the next steps. Three, based on my input, you will generate three sections. A, revised input. Provide your rewritten prompt. It should be clear, concise, and easily understood by you. B, suggestions. Provide suggestions on what details to include in the prompt to improve it. And C, questions. Ask any relevant questions pertaining to what additional information is needed from me to improve the prompt. Four, we will continue this iterative process with me, providing additional information to you and you updating the prompt in the revised prompt section until it's complete. That was a very big mouthful, but the TLDR right there is, we're go I'm going to tell you what I want to do and you've got to tell me the best way to tell you to do it. Mm -hmm. And so when I hit enter, ChatGPT comes back to me. Sure, I'd be more than happy to assist you in creating the perfect prompt for your needs. So let's get started with step one. What should the prompt be about? So when we're talking about what this prompt should be about, let's let's go, Rob, what do you want to what would you like to achieve with AI in your copywriting? Let's think of just something nice and simple we could I would like to it to 
um, analyze a large amount of input and suggest threads and commonalities among the stories that I've been told. Analyze a large amount of inputs, like words, analyze like a large body of text? A large body of text, yeah. Or is it a transcript? It, it would be a transcript, yeah. Analyze. So in this case, I want to go analyze a transcript. And what was that second thing you wanted it to do? And pinpoint threads or commonalities among the word. Among it all. Or among it all, yeah. We don't have to be clear on the English. That's what yeah, the AI's yeah. job here. It's to yeah, make yeah. the prompt better. Great. So we put analyze a transcript and pinpoint threads of commonalities among it all. That's a very fancy way of saying it. I like it. Great. Now let's proceed with the process. ChatGPT's revised prompt is, please analyze the provided transcript and identify key themes, threads, or commonalities throughout the dialogue. Then AI is going to follow this up with suggestions. One, specify the nature or context of the transcript, business meeting, legal hearing, and formal conversation. Two, clarify whether there are any unique aspects you want me to focus on, emotional tone, specific topics, unique terminologies. Three, indicate the length and complexity of the transcript. C, questions. What is the context or nature of the transcript you want analyzed? Two, are there specific elements or topics that you are particularly interested in within the transcript? Three, approximately how long is the transcript? It's done the same thing over again here, so we don't yeah. need to focus on that. Sometimes AI does that, but that's okay. Now, that's not where we're going to stop, but I think those are good suggestions. Would you agree or disagree? I agree. I agree, yeah. That's, that's definitely right. making the request more specific. Yeah, exactly. So one of the best follow-up prompts I've found to this prompt here is, Always compliment ChatGPT. It seems to do a better job. <laughs> it's weird. It's definitely got an you, ego. It's got an ego. You got to feed it. Mm. So, um, I so I'm going to go. These are great. Can you turn this into a template by adding suggestions? One, specify the nature or context, and two, clarify whether there are any specific aspects you want me to focus on. This feels like coding, but in plain English, without having to learn PHP yep. or something. One of the um, a, a, um, ways I like to describe AI is it's a, it's a calculator for English. Mm. <laughs> um, and the final thing I'm just going to put here is I want you to add these suggestions as... So I'll see if this works. This, perfect. Here we go. And this is the key thing I'm talking about. You want to turn AI into an SOP, a standard operation procedure, to get really profitable results from it. So now what you can do with this here, Rob, is you can take this, this example prompt here. Please analyze the provided business meeting transcript. Identify key themes, threads, or commonalities throughout the dialogue. Pay particular attention to happy moments, informative moments about making money, etc. Boom. Mm. That's your prompt right there. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that, that, that idea of developing, asking it to help you develop the prompts and then creating a <laughs> database of prompts, I think is really valuable. I think if anyone listening takes one idea away from this call, that should, that should be it. Yeah. Creating prompts is the biggest hurdle to starting. And this is a great way is to just get it to tell you how, because we can always think about what we want to achieve. How do we tell someone to do it is a tricky thing. And that's where we can mm -hmm. get AI to assist us. Then use that magical prompt, turn this into a template. And now you've got an SOP that's going to make your business more profitable. That's the quickest Beautiful. and easiest way to make AI work for you. Beautiful. Mm. I think this is a good place to invite you to talk about your course and mm. ask, you know, how can people learn more about that and learn more about you and get in touch? Absolutely. That'd be great. So I run a course with another fantastic fellow named Sean Mellis. So I'm actually the head of marketing for this course. It's called the One Day AI Accelerator, and it's all about helping established professionals. So I'm not talking about kids starting out trying to make money. I'm talking about established professionals, people who have been doing their job for years who want to learn to incorporate AI to be more profitable or even just secure their job in the future. That's what we've designed this course for. And I'm not the person actually teaching it. I got a little guest appearance, but I'm actually working with a great person named Sean Mellis. And he's the one who teaches the course. He's been doing this for six years. He's been doing AI and technology and chatbots before it was cool. So he was the <laughs> perfect person. I actually approached he him. He was and in said, it from I think, the start, not just, yeah, not yeah. just 2023. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. No, he's, he's not some guy who quickly jumped off the uh, NFT bandwagon and jumped straight yeah, into he's, AI. He's going, watched a few right. YouTube videos. He's got <laughs> a new course out. Yeah, no, no, no. He, he's run a pretty big agency developing chatbots for some pretty well-established companies. And... um. And I was really into AI as well, and it was just a natural fit for us to come together and um, work on this course. 
Mm. Cool. Uh, where can people go to? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, I should have mentioned the actual place. <laughs> um, so if you are curious about this, then yeah. you can go to www.one-day-ai-accelerator.com slash landing-page. So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 I will make sure that that link is in the show notes for anyone listening who didn't catch mm-hmm. that, including me. Yep. I will make sure that that link is in, is in the show, <laughs> is in the is in the podcast description and the show I, notes. I, I assure you, once again, the podcast it's much more organised. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely check that out. It's a fantastic course, and I'm sure you. It's a great way to start. We go through everything like we talked about today: follow up prompts, expert personas, strengths and limitations. Beautiful. And your website is mediable.com.au for your video work. Yep. So if you're looking for video production, I don't just teach things. I also go out in the real world and do work so I can learn actually what the best practices are. You can find me at mediable.com.au as a video production agency. And you're on LinkedIn as well. Are you the only Orson Lord? You know what? Every now and then an Orson Lord's popped up on Facebook. I don't think I've seen any of them creep up onto uh, LinkedIn yet. Let's have a look real quickly here. No, I'm still the only Orson Lord on uh, Perfect. So if you search for LinkedIn, on LinkedIn for Orson Lord, then um, Orson's the man. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I I think we have... You go. Sorry, go on. I was going to say, I think that's a great spot to leave it. That's a great place to be thinking about AI, getting inside your business, getting profitable. Perfect. That's exactly what I was going to say. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for clearing this up. Um, I think that prompt has been really useful. Um, We'll definitely try and make sure we get the video version of this so people can look over your shoulder as you were doing that and Mm -hmm. look to implement a version of that in their own business. And uh, yeah, thank you again.